Inside Parliament with Montague. With support from the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> hey, oh, it's you again. Lots of excitement at Parliament today because the general election has just been announced. The general election is a very important vote. Want to find out more? Come on then. Just need a little gargoyle magic to stretch my legs. What do you mean voting sounds boring? Everyone votes for things every single day. Yes, even you. So you're all out in the playground at lunchtime. Now all your friends want to play football, but you'd rather play tag. Unless you can convince most of them that tag is a much better game. You're going to be playing football, aren't you? More people voted for football than tag. It might be annoying when you're in the smaller group, but going with the majority is the fairest way to decide what to do. We're up in Brantshire. This is Emma Peel's constituency, just three weeks before the general election. The UK is divided into about 650 constituencies. A constituency is just an area of the country with around 70,000 people in. Each constituency gets to elect one person to be their Member of Parliament, or MP. And Emma has been doing a great job for the last Parliament, and she wants to keep the job. <laughs> and there's plenty of people who are standing against her. So Emma's going to have to work hard to convince as many people as possible to vote for her and not them. Here's Emma and some of the other candidates for election at a special meeting called a Hustings at the Town Hall. Local people are asking each candidate questions so they can work out who they think deserves their vote. The different candidates have very different ideas about things. And some candidates are often more popular than others. It's up to the candidates to convince people that they're the best man or woman for the job. As well as the hustings and public meetings, Emma and her team will be walking up and down the pavements, putting leaflets through the doors and asking people what they need from their MP. At a time of general election, you might see posters on lampposts and on people's windows with the names of candidates. They're often different colours and those colours are very important. Think about your football team. They all wear the same colours, don't they? Makes it easy to see who's on your side and who's not. <laughs> well, the same goes for political parties. They're like teams of people working together who have similar ideas about things. Using colours helps the public know which team or party an MP is part of. Come on, for example, you in England there are three main parties. Red. The Labour Party. Come They're on, associated with the colour red. Come on, you blues. Blue is the colour of the Come Conservative on, Party. Blues. There's also Come yellow, on, which is the blues. Liberal Democrats' chosen colour. And... Uh, Perhaps you can guess what colour the Green Party chose. <laughs> Pink? Don't be daft. It's green, of course. There are many other parties, and some MPs are independent, which means they are not a member of a political party team. Wake up, Emma. It's polling day, and this means it's time for the public to make up their mind. Most citizens who are over 18 are entitled to go to a polling station to cast their vote. They can send a vote by post if they'd prefer. Let's hope Emma's done enough to keep her seat. Sometimes schools are used as polling stations. Maybe yours is and you get the day off. The person voting is given a piece of paper with all the names of all the candidates. They place a cross next to the name of the person they think will do the best job. The paper is folded and put in a lockbox. And that's it. Their vote has been cast. Now it's time to count the votes. This requires hundreds of people counting the papers by hand. This can take hours and hours, but it's got to be done carefully so that the results are accurate. And now the results for And Russia. now it's the results. Every citizen gets one vote, and the candidate with the most votes wins. The system is known as first past the post. But has Emma done enough? Emma Peel with 5,402. She's done it! Well done, Emma. She's won the vote. Now, whilst Emma is pleased as punch to have been elected again to be the MP, the party she is part of will have their eye on an even bigger prize. And that's the chance to form the government. Remember how we thought of the political parties like teams, each with their colours? If a team can get over half the seats, then their leader becomes the Prime Minister and they will become the party in charge. Because they all have similar views on things, they'll know that they'll be able to win most of the votes about running the country. 
Sometimes no one gets more than half. This can make it difficult for the government to make the laws at once. In 2010 this happened, and a hung parliament was the result. The Conservatives and Liberal Democrat parties joined together to govern together. One day you'll get the chance to vote too, and you can see it's a brilliant way to have a say in what happens. And now this gargoyle votes for a rest. Ooh, so I'll see you soon. Inside Parliament with Montague the Gargoyle. With support from the Houses of Parliament. Find out more about the Houses of Parliament online on the Fun Kids website, www.funkidslive.com.